Hi, I'm Kathy Ketteridge from Blue Coast Engineering. I'm a coastal engineer. I'm working on the Luther Burbank Park project. Uh, I'm going to give an overview of the floating breakwater design and coastal processes associated with that project element. Luther Burbank site is um, impacted by uh, wind waves and boat wakes. Uh, if you look over here on the left, the park is right here on the east uh, side of Mercer Island. And it's impacted by wind waves both from the northeast along this green arrow and from the southeast along this blue arrow. Um, there are some significant uh, wave speeds and that do come from both those directions, as you can see over here on the right from this wind rose. So we anticipate in the winter, uh, storms will um, produce relatively large waves from both of those directions that the floating breakwater will both need to deal with um, and that the docks in general will need to survive. Uh, finally, uh, there are a lot of uh, high-speed recreational vessels that do pass by the park site, mostly in the summer, but, but all times of year. Um, they get relatively close to the park, um, and in moving at high speeds, they can produce pretty large wakes uh, that we expect uh, may be larger than some of the storm waves and will also need to be considered in design of the floating breakwater uh, and the floats themselves. Floating breakwaters work a little differently than um, a solid breakwater, such as a rock jetty that people may be more familiar with. Rock jetties stop most all wave energy from getting through them. Uh, so waves behind a rock jetty are relatively non-existent. It's very calm. And no matter what size the waves are or how long the wave period, it treats all of them the same and stops wave energy from getting through them for both small and for very large waves. Floating breakwaters uh, perform a little differently uh, because they can essentially float up and down on the waves. Uh, they tend to work best for uh, smaller wave heights and smaller wavelengths. And as the waves get larger and longer, such that you might see, you know, on the Pacific coast, they tend to not work very well and let a lot of the wave energy and wave heights uh, pass through them and into the marina site. We expect conditions at the Luther Burbank Park to be in a range that a floating breakwater will work very well. Um, there will be a little bit of wave energy that will probably get into the marina during a particularly large or long winter storm or due to the occasional very large boat wake. For the most part, however, we expect the breakwater to perform sort of as shown over here on the photo to the right, where you can see that there are wave conditions coming in from the right sort of choppy waves, and then once they go past the floating breakwater, you have relatively calm conditions in the marina. I want to do a quick summary of opportunities and constraints um, of the floating breakwater related to, to wind and boat weight conditions. First, the floating breakwater can be uh, configured uh, in different ways uh, such that we can optimize its performance. So for the length of breakwater installed, you get the best wave reduction in the marina possible. Um, so they're very plug and play. You can put them in very different configurations. Uh, secondly, uh, the breakwater uh, will reduce wave energy not only in the marina, but also along the shoreline of some portions of the park and should provide some erosion protection uh, from wind waves and boat wakes along the shoreline because of that. The constraints, uh, one I've already mentioned, uh, the, that the floating breakwater will allow some wave energy to go through it and there will be some waves therefore in the marina. Usually those, uh, we expect that to happen, large winter storm or really large incoming boat wake. We expect it to do well through most conditions, but there will be some wave energy that will get through that uh, floating breakwater. And finally, uh, docks will be impacted by uh, a combination of both waves from the northeast and from the southeast, and then boat weights primarily from the east. And so there will be some sort of uh, trade-offs and optimization and design to allow the best performance we can get out of the floating breakwater alignment uh, without um, making the breakwater overly large. Thank you very much.